Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Bad City, a Japanese crime action flick from 2022 that has received a little bit of internet hype. It was directed by Kenzuke Sonomura, who previously directed Hydra, a film that had some legitimately good fight scenes. Now as I read the following plot synopsis, you're going to get an idea of why I simply had to watch this movie. The following plot was taken from The Guardian. In fictional Japanese metropolis Kaiko City, corruption is rife, and it all seems to stem from Wataru Gojo, played by Lily Frankie, who has designs on redeveloping a poor part of the city. As Gojo is announcing his bid to become Kaiko's mayor, we see a bathhouse of lushly tattooed Yakuza get wiped out by a single long-haired squinting assassin and his boss and the assassin is played by Tak Sakaguchi. He's working for Madam, queen pin of the Korean Mafia within Kaiko, who rather entertainingly dresses like someone trying to shoplift all the stock from a Versace boutique at the same time. The chief prosecutor, played by Masaya Kato, and his assistant put together a task force of honest cops from the Violent Crimes Unit and place Torada in charge, even though up until now he's been in jail on charges that connect him to matter. So since Sonomura has only really directed, or primarily lead directed, two films so far, it makes sense to compare Bad City to Hydra. Now first of all, the story and the characters are better in Bad City. From the very beginning, we see like the deep-rooted corruption. You have this, like, one of the prosecutors apologizes to the bad guy at the beginning of the movie, Gojo for causing him the inconvenience of being charged for a crime. And then the prosecutor promises you know, there won't be any more problems. You know, And these opening scenes, along with the bathhouse slaughter, uh, set things up nicely, because we realize the fraud and the violence that run rampant in this city. Our team of protagonists are a good bunch. You know, As I mentioned, Masaya Kato's character recruits all of them, and we get two dudes and one girl from the Violent Crimes Division, one of whom is played by Masanori Mimoto, the lead actor from Hydra. And, you know, the dude can move. He's a good uh, action lead. And then we get this old dude with white hair who shows up, like the dude who was in prison. <laughs> like, what's this guy going to do? And it's like, just wait. You know, he's got a pretty complicated history and is currently in prison, and they get him out. When you look at the crew at the beginning of the movie... They don't look that intimidating, you know, or even very capable on the surface, but they are good at their job, they're tough, and they can survive even in desperate situations. It's an interesting way to kind of handle a movie like this. A lot of times in, in movies you'll have a protagonist who's just like, just a crazy badass who just doesn't lose a fight. You know, you don't really get that here. You know, and uh, because of that, you know, they're normal enough, they don't have crazy superior physical traits. It makes some underdogs when the crap hits a fan. I kind of like how they set it up. And like many Yakuza-related movies out of Japan, the actual plot does get rather convoluted and involves a number of people. But the conflict between the characters is strong enough to maintain interest, and it grows in intensity during the second half. And the plot developments are effective as well. Like, I watched this movie twice within a few days of each other, and the second time I watched it, everything was pretty clear. You know, it's... It, it's not just convoluted for the sake of being convoluted. It, there's a few data dumps and uh, exposition scenes that you might need to watch twice to get everything, but it's it's a pretty good plot here. Uh, I don't think it's anything that's going to like blow you away in terms of dram dramatic impact, but this is a solid story for a Yakuza-based action flick. Probably better than normal, I would say. Or uh, better than usual, or the average Yakuza flick. And obviously I'm a big fan of Masaya Kato, and Tak Sakaguchi, so I got a lot of enjoyment seeing them in supporting roles. Now, if you've seen Hydra, you'll have an idea regarding the action design in Bad City. The fights have a scrappiness to them, and they're more realistic than your typical action movie. Now, the film opens with Tak Sakaguchi and his Korean manager you know, just laying waste to those Yakuza that the plot uh, synopsis mentioned in that uh, spa resort. Not an action scene per se, but a series of like quick bloody kills using knives. And it's pretty uh, pretty good. It's like an intense way to open the film. But the first legitimate fight scene, per se, involves our heroes. 
and they fight some baseball players on the balcony of an apartment complex. And it, it gives you a good, good first look at how the fighting is going to be filmed. You get a lot of, you know, it, it's the strikes are choreographed with some nice moves, but also very imperfect and mostly realistic. So we get wide camera strike or shots. Uh, the characters actually miss on some of their punches and kicks and they lose their balance and kind of fall sometimes and get knocked over. It's not clean and perfect with the strikes, which gives the action design a different feel. You know, the style of action does make sense for, like, dark gangster flicks involving the criminal underworld, you know what I mean? It just, when you, when you watch the scene, it just, uh, it's a good scene and it just feels right for a movie like this. Now, the second big fight kind of ups the game in terms of intensity and violence, and it's a brawl instead of a, a bad guy hideout. And Takasakaguchi comes back for that one. And it has used a lot of, it goes back to knives, but it's more choreographed with the knives as opposed to the opening scene of the film. And this scene it emphasizes our hero's ability to avoid getting cut and eventually disarm the opponents. You want to, like, get the knife out of the guy's hand, you know what I mean? And then subdue them and arrest them. There's a lot of emphasis on that. A lot of takedowns and grapples. There's there's a lot of shades of MMA in this, mixed martial arts. And uh, and then we get a brief, I guess you could say highly choreographed duel uh, with knives that was pretty neat. And some important events happen during the scene, which also gives it some, uh, some impact and a, a memorable uh, uh, feel. Then we get the big finale, which is exactly what you want from a gangster action flick. Very long. I, I didn't. I should have timed it. I want to say it's at least like 15 minutes long. And uh, cashes in on everything that came before it. You get the MMA style that's heightened even more in this. And I'm not going to say too much to avoid spoilers, but I found it to be very satisfying. If I were to criticize anything regarding the action... There are a few wide swings when dudes are using knives or baseball bats. At times, it seems like they're going a little too wide with it. You know what I mean? But, uh, and also, when people use their guns, they almost always miss. <laughs> you know, like we had some of this, uh, if you remember Reborn, when Takasakaguchi was just like dodging bullets for like no reason. Uh, you don't quite get that here. Maybe a tiny bit. But it's mostly people just being a bad shot. Uh, so that might annoy you a little bit, but for the most part, I think the action really works. Uh, the lighting in the film, pretty nice. Not insanely vibrant, but you get a nice little mix of different color schemes and hues. Just enough flash of color to mix things up. But overall, I, I strongly recommend Bad City for anyone who likes Japanese Yakuza flicks, or just crime action flicks in general. And I hope this team of filmmakers and actors keeps making movies like this because i've been asking for movies like this from japan for years and it looks like over the past handful of years we've been getting more of the urban themed contemporary action stuff and uh, i like this trend quite a bit so i hope they keep making this stuff uh it's kind of right up my alley this is currently streaming on youtube and amazon and apparently wellgo usa is preparing a future region a blu-ray release in the United States, which you can actually pre-order right now. You can just go right on Amazon and pre-order the Blu-ray. I think it's set for release on September 19th. So check this one out, folks. And as always, I'll see you next time.